Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're revisiting the same old processor. This is the Ryzen 5 2200G, but does it work with the B550 chipsets? That's what we're here to find out. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the B550 chipset, and in particular, this is the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4 B550 chipset motherboard, which is a pretty much a mid-range motherboard, which is not designed to work with anything less than a Ryzen 3000 or a Ryzen 5000 processor, or depending when you're watching this, it may be a 4000 APU as well, but that's by the by, it doesn't exist currently, as of the end of October 2020. So the question I get asked a lot is, will this board work with an older processor? Now we've tried it with a 1700X, no problems at all. We've also tried it with a Ryzen 7 1700, and that was absolutely fine, but we haven't tried it with any APUs. So currently today we're running the Ryzen 3 2200G, and um, not entirely plain sailing, if I'm completely honest with you. The other boards that we've tested in the series have actually been pretty decent. This is the first one which has actually stumbled across a problem. Now for some reason, I've not managed to get this to run XMP in any way, shape, or form. I've got two sticks of RAM, or rather two sets of RAM that I've been trying, one of which is a Corsair LPX, uh, which they generally do tend to be a little bit fussy about motherboards anyway, and especially with XMP settings. This is a DDR4 3000 set, and even trying to run it at less speeds, like 2800, etc., just the, the board refuses to post. Leave it in standard settings, 2133 at 1.2 volts, and it boots up every single time with no problems at all. So it's not gonna leave you completely out for dry. If you are planning to get this processor, or maybe you've got this processor and you're looking to get a new board and you're thinking about this one as a particular kind of placeholder for the processor, etc., then it will work, kind of. It isn't the greatest experience, if I'm completely honest with you. But having said that, comparatively, this board against the A520, which we also reviewed, which uh, again, you can check out from the links up there, this does actually perform better than the A520 version, even with XMP turned off. So if that's any kind of takeaway, if you're thinking, well, maybe you want to get a little bit more performance, then spend a little bit more on the motherboard, such as the B550 over to the A520, and it does kind of overcome some of the limitations. So let's take a look at the uh, system, and we'll go through the individual parts and show some of the results that I've got. And actually, there's a really interesting one from Cinebench, which actually really highlights this entire series of videos very, very accurately. So first of all, looking at the screen, we've got the performance results from user benchmark. And again, this isn't a perfect benchmark in any way, shape or form. But for me, it's actually very good to run repeatedly, very quickly to highlight any kind of uh, drawbacks or any positive points on a particular system. Now on this particular one, we've got gaming at 17%, which uh, is 1% less than we had with the MSI board, which is the B550 also, and roughly about the same as the A520 version. The desktop percentage is roughly the same again, and the workstation, I think, is a little bit lower this time around. This is mostly down to the fact that we've not been able to enable the XMP profile on the RAM. I'm pretty sure if we managed to enable that, we would got pretty much the same scores as the MSI board, but unfortunately, due to either a limitation in the RAM that we've been using, again, Corsair LPX, I've also tried some V-Color RAM as well, and not one of them has been able to boot up properly with XMP enabled. So maybe a little bit more time and effort to work out what the actual dialed in settings need to be for it to post every single time. Again, this is not really what this video is about. It's just basically, will it work or not? So um, yeah, take that with whichever grain of salt you wish to, but you may have to uh, modify your memory settings or run it at its slowest speed, but the system still will work. It just will be a little bit slower. So process-wise, graphics again is in the red because it is an APU, so it is particularly slow. So the Ryzen 3 2200G, uh, as you can see there, pretty much bang on dead center of where the kind of the peak is. So we're not really losing out any performance, but we're not really gaining anything. Again, this is a B550 chipset, so potentially you could overclock it, get the frequency up. This chip, I know for a fact, runs all day long at 3.8 gigahertz all core boost, so we could quite easily up that and get a little bit more speed out of it. But I wanted to show you what it's like from the stock settings, basically from a reset BIOS, just so you can get an idea of the kind of the baseline figures. Uh, Processor-wise, or rather graphics-wise, the Vega 8, again, pretty much at the top of where we expect to be, uh, but still particularly poor. Storage-wise, uh, again, pretty much the same deal. We've used the silicon power drive. This is the A60. Uh, it's a PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 drive. 
so it's pretty much ex uh, done what it is expected to do so that's uh, worked out really well and the ram is where we've really tri tripped up um, quite low down the ranking again because we haven't been able to enable xmp it has suffered quite a bit so now let's take a look at uh, some of the other things so temperature wise actually i haven't got it on the screen at the moment but temperature wise again pretty much exactly the same story top temperatures in the upper 50s and lows of around about 25 to 28 there's that around that sort of thing ambient temperatures of about 23 degrees c so pretty much what we expect to see with the wraith cooler we are using as always the icy graphite thermal pad which we've used across the entire range of these tests just to keep things level and likewise obviously we've tried to use the lpx ram and the same hard drive etc on all these tests same power supply as well the corsair cx 750m just so we've got um, a relatively level baseline for our testing so let's close this and we'll take a look now at the uh, cinebench so cinebench as you can see in this bottom corner we've run a few tests now so the best we've had so far was with the msi board and this was the 1468 that was with an overclock as well the oc genie was kicked in so that done pretty well and again i'm expecting with this with a slight overclock you probably would get similar sort of levels the uh, ryzen 3220g so this is your score here so this is the one that i've currently done again this is with xmp disabled so there is that to consider so it has done pretty well and has scored slightly better than it did on the a520 motherboard so definitely there are things to take away from this is the a520 boards do restrict systems of a little bit not in a huge way in normal everyday use you'd never notice it but in benchmarks certainly you do start to see these anomalies crop up um, also one of the other things i'll take away from this is normally asteroid boards are very good with this particular ram i've actually got the same ram in a b450 motherboard the pro 4 uh, which is running in caps machine and it's absolutely fine runs perfectly so i'm not too sure whether it's a bios issue whether it just needs a bios update that potentially could do it but i suppose the real takeaway of this is this board the b550 will work with other processors such as the first generation ryzen processors the first generation of apu such as the 2200g and being the support is there for that the 3200g 3400gs etc going to be no problem at all uh, the 200g is one i haven't tested as of yet or the 3000g but i'm pretty confident that those should work absolutely fine as well again we may have some slight issues with xmp settings again depending on your ram etc etc but essentially pretty much every processor that we can find at the moment and that i've tested has worked a-okay -okay and has booted after a cmos reset so that pretty much wraps up this video if there's any other processors you'd like to see tested on these particular boards then please do let us know in the comments section below if you like this content hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this on a regular basis but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching